Sujata, when you ready, tell us. Yeah, ma'am, I'm ready. Now, can you just check your connection once your voice? This is actually to sit in a different spot. Ma'am, now I'm audible. Yeah, you're audible now. I don't know what the problem is. Yesterday, what happened yesterday, brother? Nan, we had. Um, I had to keep myself unmuted the entire seminar because her voice was not uh, audible. Who's? Uh, that was Dr. Vibha Mivada. Right, right, right. Yeah. So her voice is not audible properly. So I had to keep myself unmuted. I think only two people can unmute their voices. Why did you have to unmute then? How did that help? Um. I muted myself and her voice became, uh, you know, cracking and breaking and all that. And then okay. when I muted myself, her voice is clear. Okay, <laughs> so maybe her voice and your background noise then. Probably. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Rashmika, they're saying that your voice is very soft. I think so too. Uh, maybe you need to like come closer or I turn your volume up or something. The, I have to catch the mic and speak. Is this fine now? What happened? I have to catch the your phone. Okay, mic okay, and... okay. <laughs> okay, no problem. Now? Yeah, it's yeah. clear. It's just that it, the volume the uh, volume is very low. That's all. Okay, okay. Am I clear? Am I loud enough? Yes, yes. You're very loud. Oh, yes. Okay. I think if Sujata and I are audible, that's fine then. That's yes. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, so, Jada, if you're ready, let's start then. Yeah, ma'am, we can start. Shall we start? Okay, just give me one minute. I'll just open the page and keep it ready. Hmm. Yeah, so let's start then. Good evening and welcome, everybody. Um, uh, hold on, the recording has to start. Yeah. Good evening and welcome everyone. Today is a very special session because uh, it's probably going to be our last session on philosophy for some time. I believe exams are around the corner and uh, our student uh, speaker as well as other students need the time to prepare. So all of you sit back and enjoy it because uh, we might have to take leave for another few weeks after this. It's a very nice topic today, temperaments. It's not a long topic, it's not a complicated topic, but it's very, very applicable, especially in homeopathic practice. Having finished myisms, having finished constitutions, having finished polycrests, let us now study temperaments because uh, it is very, very applicable and it will help us select the simulimum when patients come to us in our practice. So without further the stage or the podium to Sujata, the virtual podium, and uh, she can take over. Okay, Sujata, over to you. Yeah, ma'am. A very good evening to everyone. So, like you all know, uh, today's topic is about temperament. So, uh, whenever we heard the word temperament, uh, the thing comes to our mind that uh, nervous, sanguine, choleric, melancholic, phlegmatic. So these are the types of temperaments. So today uh, we'll discuss about a uh, little more about temperaments and uh, these types of temperaments and their characteristics. So let's start. So temperament, the word temperament is derived from a Latin word that is called temporary, which means to moderate. So Temperament word comes from a Latin word that is temporary and that word means to moderate. So then the definition of temperament. The psychophysical, both psychological and physical, the psychophysical personality peculiar to an individual influencing his metabolic process, manner of thought and action can be termed as temperament of that particular person. So temperament is peculiar to an individual. So it is an individual thing. So each temperament, uh, individually temperament will be different. So it is the peculiar personality that is psychophysical that will influence 
that individual's metabolic process manner of thought his actions so that will be termed as the temperament of that particular person so there is another definition that a characteristic combination of bodily mental and moral qualities which together constitute the character and disposition of an individual and predispose him to act and behave in a particular manner so it is temperament is always uh, different in different individuals so it is uh, that uh, peculiar characteristic that will be the combination of bodily mental and moral qualities that will constitute the character uh, the manner of thought the actions so behavior of that particular person so in one line temperament means the mental tendency or nature or the behavior of the patient so it is true that the genetic tendency child derives from the parents does not yield to any treatment so the genetic uh, diseases the genetic uh, problems the child uh, derives from uh, parents it does not yield to any type of treatment but the physiological disturbances which disturb the quality of life can be modified by the perfectly selected stimulant remedy means the perfectly selected homeopathic remedy so like H. Roberts mentions uh, this line uh, in his philosophy book uh, about temperament that the morbidic influences, that is the inevitable influences, that are attached to the temperamental tendencies are amenable to treatment. So we can treat those uh, morbidic influences, those uh, influences that affect the uh, temperaments, and can be removed by the homeopathic remedy. this is itself greatly preventive of the dangers arising from the temperamental weakness so then we'll discuss about types of temperaments we all know that types of temperament generally divided into five types that is nervous melancholic sanguine phlegmatic and choleric so first we'll discuss about nervous temperament so in nervous temperament there is um, excessive mental and physical alertness because it is of nerves so that's why the patient is very much alert in both mental and physical sphere so nervous temperament the most important thing is that there is the mental and physical alertness and nerves easily excited so there is excessive excitability of nerves and that will lead to mental and physical alertness and the patient is very anxious that nervous temperament persons are very anxious if something happens they just got anxious and afraid uh, that what will happen and uh, how how i can tackle this situation so just he just got very anxious and there is pessimistic the person is very pessimistic mean it is the opposite of optimist so optimist means uh, he will if if something happens some situation happens then the optimist person will see the positive side of the thing but the pessimist person will see the negative sides will always expect the worst situations that uh, why this is happen and always thinks about the negative aspect of, of any situation so that kind of person are nervous temperament that is pessimist and they are also in so we all know about reserved thoughtful and the person are uh, nervous temperament so anxious pessimistic and introverted and uh, we can compare uh, nervous temperament persons to uh, they will be just like a sparrow because little things scare them away because there is excessive nervous excitability so they are very alert in mental and physical sphere and they also got very anxious in situations so little things scare them away so if we take examples from medicines then 
arsenic album argentum nitricum gelsinium etc belongs to the nervous tendrum okay so now we'll discuss about the second variety that is the melancholic tendrum so melancholic word derived from melin means black and pol so here also the patient has pessimistic outlook means he will she always thinks about the negative side of things like shown in the picture that optimist person will see that my my glass is half full but the pessimist person will see that my glass is half empty means you will see the negative side the bad side the always thinks about the negative side that that kind of person are also melancholic the excessive mental and physical alert and uh, melancholic temperament people are very talented they are faithful perfect philosophical idealistic people who who, who are deep thinkers they are self sacrificing melancholic temperament people are just perfect kind of people they have talent they have creative ideas they have poetic outlook they they will um, uh, tell philosophical things uh, they will advise you uh, they they can self sacrifice on certain things for uh, someone for uh, for their loved ones and they are faithful so they are just a perfect kind of people so that's why there is a you know, nature of fastidious as well because they are perfect people so they want everything in perfect way so that's why there is fastidiousness present in melancholic or temperament so we can compare melancholic temperament persons that uh, they are just like an ant they never share their work with others means they never tell you that uh, do my work or they never burden um, on anyone they will do their work alone and they are hard workers so that's why we can compare melancholic persons to an ant because they never share their work with others and they are hard workers and they are the king maker and not the king because they are philosophical idealistic and also they are self sacrificing so that's why they they can advise you in certain situations they can help you they can guide you so they are the king maker so melancholic temperament are the king maker and not the king so if we take um, examples from medicine then uh, ignatia aurum metallicum natrum mule etc are belongs to the melancholic temperament And the next one is sanguine temperament so sanguine word comes from sangus means blood so so that's why in sanguine temperament you will find uh, most of the diseases related to blood and vascular abnormality and here the person has the optimistic outlook so in nervous and melancholic temperament the person has pessimistic outlook but here the person has opposite means the optimistic outlook so optimistic means they are very hip, help, hopeful and confident about the future they will uh, if, if something happens so optimistic people will see the positive of things they are very confident uh, about their futures they are very hip, hopeful and uh, so that kind of mentality sanguine temperament person has but whereas nervous and melancholic have this opposite kind of thinking that is the pessimistic means uh, they will see the negative side of things but here they will see the positive side of things that is optimistic outlook and there is cool pulse and plexoric so plexoric means um, excessive cool uh, of fluid excessive cool of bodily fluid uh, especially blood like we discussed that uh, in sanguine temperament we will find the most of the diseases related to blood so that's why there is full plus pulse and uh, plexoric persons and the persons are very talkative and here the persons are extrovert and very enthusiastic 
energetic cheerful having good sense of humor so when you meet any sanguine temperament persons they are very talkative they are um, just cheerful and they they spreads that um, um, enthusiastic that positive vibes uh, wherever they go so they are, they also have the good sense of humor so so that kind of person are sanguine temperament so they are extrovert and energetic people and they spread just positive vibes energies cheerfulness um, so we can compare sanguine temperament uh, persons to uh, a grasshopper because they only think about the present they live in the present and no, not worried about the future so they are very enthusiastic energetic persons they only think about the present they celebrate the present and not worried not much worried about the future that what will happen they will see the positive aspect and the present situation so if we take um, example from medicines then lachesis ferum hos coffea etc belongs to the sanguine temperament okay so now the next one that is the phlegmatic temperament so here the there is phlegm or uh, mucosal discharges and the persons are very apathetic so apathetic means they is feeling or showing no interest they just don't care they they have no interest in anything like like shown in the picture that they don't they have no interest in uh, that class in the picture so they are that kind of person they they show no interest in anything they have not interested at all so that kind of person apathetic person belongs to the phlegmatic like, temperament and they are very friendly peaceful passive and bold so they are not active kind of person they are passive bold and they are easy going people well balanced people and also the most important thing is that they are good listeners like shown in the picture the you know, they are the good listeners and uh, they will listen whatever problem you share with them maybe they have the solution to your problem or not but they will listen what you are saying and uh, they are easy going and well balanced people so you don't uh, have to much argue and anything so you can say anything to them and they are easy going people they are passive kind of people and they are family oriented they want to spend more time in their with their family so they are family oriented person so that's why they are generally late at work and they are very childish calm and quiet and they are the people who just watch the scene like we discussed that they are a passive kind of people so they are the people if something happens then they will uh, just silently uh, stand there and watch the scene and uh, so we can compare the phlegmatic temperament person like a buffalo who is very sluggish passive and non aggressive so they are not aggressive at all very sluggish and passive kind of person so if we take example from uh, for uh, phlegmatic temperament calgaria car barreta car pulsatilla etc belongs to the phlegmatic temperament then the next one that is the choleric temperament so from the name we can guess that uh, there is uh, diseases related to liver so there is tendency to liver disorders and uh, the person is, has a irritable temper quick impulsive kind of person very aggressive so you are the person is very aggressive whereas in phlegmatic temperament there is non aggressive persons but choleric temperament persons are very aggressive there is quick temper they they are very impulsive person if something happens or uh, that irritated them that um that they easily gets angry so there is quick temper and aggressiveness 
and here also there is optimism so choleric temperament persons also have the optimistic outlook that uh, they will see the positive aspect of uh, everything in every situation and also they are the extroverts confident dynamic active unemotional and they are the leaders of the family they will lead the family because they are the active persons they are most dynamic confident and extroverts and also they are the critics of errors if something happens they will criticize so they are the critic of errors and they, they are, have the destructive mentality quarrelsome and haughty haughty means very arrogant and proud of himself and very arrogant type of persons are uh, choleric temperament and because they are very aggressive also there is they are the critic of errors that's why they are the most arrogant kind of people so we can compare choleric temperament persons uh, to a horse so because they are goal oriented racing and strong they are active persons dynamic persons they are strong persons they always race and they always have that goal oriented mindset like a horse so if we compare to medicines uh, related to medicines then examples will be nuxbaum lycopodium brownia veratrum all belongs to the choleric temperament so these are the five varieties of uh, most important five varieties of temperaments but we also have some other types of temperaments like uh, irritable lymphatic so irritable temperament means the person is very irritable easily vexed person so easily vexed person means they are very difficult and frustrating to deal with you don't want to talk to him because they just get um, easily angry and uh, irritable and it, it, it is very difficult for us to please that person irritable temperament kind of person so it is very difficult to please him so that's why um, they are very difficult and frustrating to deal with to talk to so they are irritable kind of persons and uh, becomes easily angry so example will be apismel and the next one is lymphatic temperament so uh, by the name uh, we can guess that there is inflammation of lymphatics so there is a uh, disorder uh, inflammation of skin uh, inflammation of lymphatics and here the person also very sluggish pale lean and flabby muscles so example will be bacteria so these are the types of uh, temperaments so sometimes we find the combination of these types in a single patient so in a single patient we can find the uh, different types in these types of uh, temperament combination of these types but one type will always dominate others so there is always one type if there is combination of certain types in a single patient but there will be one type that that will always dominate to others so now the what are the clinical importance of temperament so if we know about temperament so how it will help us in our clinical practice so what is the clinical importance of temperament so it will help in understanding the psychological basis of the disease like we discussed so it is related to the psychophysical basis so we can uh, get the psychological aspect of the disease and also we can get or understand the patient in relationship to his environment and disease so we can get the relationship of patient with the, with his environment in in his health condition in his healthy condition and also in his disease condition we can get the psychological aspect of that patient in that healthy condition and also in disease condition and it also helps in and in that way it will helps us to and guides guides us to similimum remedy choosing the similimum remedy and also it will help in grouping of remedies in matra medica like we all ha we have the groups of remedies and uh, in matra medica the groups 
so it helps in grouping of remedies in matra medica with similar temperaments so like ak roberts mentions uh, in his philosophy that in homeopathic instruction there is frequent mention of temperaments especially do we consider temperaments in case taking and also in prescribing and temperament can give a clue can guide us to the remedy it can give us a certain uh, group of remedies that uh, this this remedies that this person is nervous temperament and these are the remedies uh, may be suited to him so temperament can give us a clue to the remedy but the final prescription the final remedy we choose must be always made on the basis of totality of patient symptoms because we all know in homeopathy we uh, prescribe medicine based on totality of symptoms so temperament can give us a clue to certain remedy to certain group of remedies to certain kind of similar remedies but the final prescription will always be made based on the totality of patient symptoms so now the potency and uh, potency and its relation uh, to temperament the potency and temperament so lower potency is larger and more frequent doses so lower potency larger and more frequent doses we can give in uh, torpid and phlegmatic individual so torpid means the patient is mentally and physically inactive so that kind of person so, torpid and phlegmatic individuals they need lower potencies and more frequent doses and also they are dull of comprehension and they are slow to act sluggish individuals and of individuals of gross habits so gross habits means the noticeably bad habits like uh, nose picking nails biting so these are the kind of uh, we can tell that these are the gross habits so they are dull slow to act and sluggish individuals with gross habits and those who possess great muscular power they have the great muscular power physical build up but who require a powerful stimulus to excite them so in this kind of persons we can uh, in this kind of temperaments we can recommend lower potencies in the larger and more frequent doses and higher potencies we can give uh, to sensitive persons of the nervous sanguine or choleric temperament and they are intellectual people they are perfect kind of people who are quick to act and quick to react and they are also jealous and impulsive persons so higher potencies we can give to nervous sanguine and choleric temperament and uh, lower potencies we can give to mostly the phlegmatic kind of temperament uh, the torpid individuals the inactive ones the sluggish so that's it about um, temperament i hope that uh, this will uh, be helpful to you all so thank you yes thank you sujatha very short and sweet topic very short and sweet explanation but a uh, lot of information has been provided in these slides regarding temperament so when we all study in college about the various drugs we find a lot of classification before the actual drug picture itself and uh, temperament is a very important characteristic a very important uh, category that drugs are classified into because that helps us uh, identify the constitution identify the nature of the patient what we must understand is that you cannot change the temperament of a patient uh, the core nature and the core constitution will always remain the same sometimes they may be subjected to change or they may progress to the next level based on the environment that they are exposed to and the corresponding uh, physical ailments will also occur uh, based on the temperament that they belong to now um what sujatha gave our uh, gave us five different uh, temperaments but uh, when we go to herbert roberts he has explained four different ones they are nervous sanguine bilious and phlegmatic we can even say phlegmatic or phlegmatic either way the pronunciation is fine but uh, yeah what is the difference between temperament and constitution constitution is everything it it uh, deals with the physical mental dynamic plane overall uh, you know the structure and the functioning and the mental aspect of the patient temperament is more to do with the physical or the psychological i mean sorry the psychological plane and uh, how they react to a certain situation um, you know with, with their emotions or with their feelings 
temperament is part of constitution constitution is the whole isn't it so that's how it is uh so yeah coming to the different types herbert roberts has given these four and uh, let us now try to correlate with the, the different myisms and with the different uh, uh, von krogel's constitution and even a little with the uh, with the ayurvedic constitution okay it's not necessary for you all to by heart or to know this but once we understand the relation it becomes easier for us to understand and to relate with the drugs hmm? so the first one was nervous uh sujatha can we just have the names of the 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 slide with the names of the temperaments the five temperaments the common one between hers and roberts is nervous nervous is the first and probably the most sensitive and most reactive of the lot and uh, the nervous yeah that, that's it that's it stop there so the nervous patient is um, has more of uh, neuromuscular affections the neuromuscular system is affected so they are very sensitive to external impressions and also very sensitive to outward uh, stimuli so they themselves by nature are alert they are sensitive they are irritable and uh, they have uh, you know they don't have very deep seated complaints they have more of superficial complaints and the remedies that come under that are uh, arsenic alum argentum nitricum so you can see that sensitivity plays a very big role even something like phosphorus so you have to understand that this is one of the temperaments so they even by nature they are irritable they they react to everything they snap at everything suppose uh, till yesterday they were having one kind of uh, smell in the house some agarbatti and tomorrow you change the agarbatti immediately they will have a change uh, in their body they'll start sneezing they'll start coughing they'll complain about the change in the smell so they very rigid that way they are sensitive so they keep reacting to it if, if suddenly if the volume of the speaker goes up by a couple of notches then they'll get sensitive they are they touch you to that so that's how it is and um, what myism i want us to be a little bit more interactive so what myism do you think uh, the nervous uh, you know the nervous uh, temperament corresponds to there is no fixed rule it is yes correct it's the sora because you know it is soric it is a neuromuscular it is sensitive it is superficial it is at the level of the skin very good so okay what is the combination of earth cold dry fire hot moist water wet air how is this combination related to temperaments billy's temperament combination of earth cold and dry sanguine temperament combination of fire hot i'm coming to that i will not give you the exact same explanation of the elements but i am going to correlate uh, so just stay with me and just listen to it okay so nervous is related to sora and sora is also uh, corresponds to the carbo nitrogenoid constitution of uh, von grobogel's classification and it is also uh, it also corresponds loosely i wouldn't say word to word but it's loosely correlated to uh, this one vata uh, dosha of ayurveda vata is the sanskrit word for air for uh, gas or for for air so any deficiency any functional disturbance any uh, you know any disturbance in the you know just the uh, external stimulus external environment of the patient can cause these complaints to flare up so if you notice it, it's more of an air related complaint so if there's a change in air change in atmosphere suddenly it's thunder there is thunder and lightning outside so complaints like this will give rise to the nervous uh temperament or somebody who is of a nervous temperament is more susceptible to these complaints next comes melancholic melancholic was not there in roberts classification it's a more recent classification so it is probably more of psychological thing it's not uh, really to do more of a physical thing um so a melancholic as the name suggests is a uh, black bile colic is another word for bile like like cholic cholecystitis like that colic so when the gall bladder or when the bile um, secretion is disturbed or if there is some metabolic disturbance in the body uh, you can imagine how you feel you feel very dull you feel very irritable you feel very listless and uh, you come to a point where uh, you know you don't want to uh, you, you you don't want to try too hard you have the potential but you don't try too hard okay so you land up becoming pessimistic pessimistic is another word for negative so you know okay if i go there that shop will be closed for sure or if uh, 
you know, uh, the team that I support in the sports match is going to lose for sure. So you're being pessimistic from the start. So you keep minimum expectations so that you have minimum disappointment. That is what pessimistic is about. But they're also same time, they're hardworking. And uh, there's something she said, king maker, not kings themselves. So they are behind the scenes worker. They don't enjoy the attention. They don't want the importance of the power. They just help do the work. They are hard workers and they want to get the job done for their satisfaction. So they'd rather do it behind the scenes rather than be in the forefront and get all the credit for it. And a very, very excellent example for this is Natrum Muir. Natrum Muir does all the hard work, but then they don't expect. They rather prefer not to get, expect any of the power or any of the recognition because God forbid, if they don't get it, then they'll be disappointed. So they choose not to expect any appreciation or any you know, adulation for what hard work they have done. Uh, so what can be the myisms that correspond in someone's answer? I'm saying myisms, you can have more than one also. Okay. When, once I explain the miasmatic relation to these temperaments, all these questions that moisture, earth, cold, hot, fire, all that will be uh, better uh, understood then. You will automatically understand. I don't even have to elaborate. So nervous was more of air, and that was soda, carbonitrogenoid, and uh, vata dosha. Melancholic, what can it be? Syphilis. OK. Can there some, be something more than syphilis? It is Sora plus syphilis. Okay. Sora plus syphilis. So therefore, Vata and Pitta. Pitta is for syphilis and Vata is for Sora. So Sora plus syphilis, because you see the characteristics of both in this temperament. So carbonitrogenoid plus oxygenoid. Now, you know, in carbonitrogenoid, it's more of uh, functional disturbances. Oxygenoid, there is more of uh, abnormal discharges, abnormal, uh, you know, changes, structural changes in the body. So a combination of both you will find in melancholic temperament. And you see Aurum Met, that is another example that Sujata gave. In Aurum Met also, you have a lot of syphilitic uh, you know, tendencies like uh, ulceration, depression, tendency to suicide. But at the same time, they're very duty bound. They will not stay back and they will not ignore their duty. So that is a very soric thing to do, they're hard workers. Next comes sanguine. Sanguine or sang is a root word for blood in Latin. So blood, in other words, is nothing but the normal body fluids. So any disturbances in the cardiovascular system, any disturbances in the circulation gives, will cause the, or will, uh, you, you say that people of that temperament are prone to those disturbances. But what does blood do? Blood is a positive, good tissue in the body that, uh, you know, that produces or that transports nutrition, that transports uh, oxygen, that transports, that gets rid of the waste. So it does a very good job in the body. It keeps the body going. It keeps the body alive. So people who are having a good circulation, who, are ten, who have a tendency towards circulatory disturbances, such people are gently by nature. That is when they don't have any disorder, they are hopeful, they are optimistic, they're confident, they're friendly, they're optimistic. Because the blood is circulating properly in the body, they feel good and they feel positive. They are plethoric, so very red in the face. And uh, imagine somebody who's had a few glasses of wine, how red their face becomes, something like that. And uh, they're also extroverted. They quite, you know, they, they enjoy life. They go out, they enjoy all these activities where they receive attention. So they're quite outward in their expressions. Now, what myism can this be? I've explained so much. Not Sora. It's not Sora. Come on, go back to our myism lecture. Psychosis, yes. It matches psychosis and kapha. Kapha dosha is kapha or kabam is the phlegm. It's the phlegm or the, uh, you know, the discharges. It doesn't have to mean phlegm. It also means fluids in the body. So blood, sanguine and kapha. Kapha is to do with fluids in general. So any excessive uh, fluids, abnormal fluids, edema and uh, cysts, vesicles or even uh, benign tumors, all these things will give rise to uh, or, or rather, you see, phlegmatic people are more prone to these things. So, psychosis, kapha, and the hydrogenoid constitution of one Grovogel. So, what happens is, uh, these things are corresponding to the phlegmatic uh, uh, temperament. And what are the remedies? 
there is lachesis there is coffea there is ferrum fos you can even add sepia because you know we saw in sepia that sepia enjoys uh, going out enjoys all these activities more for herself rather than to show off to people so dancing performing all these things belong to that particular drug the next uh, drug uh, the, sorry the next temperament is phlegmatic so phlegm in other words the mucous membranes are affected and uh, maybe even serous membranes and in, there is an increase in discharge and there is a lot of phlegm being produced so then what happens is uh, the person because just imagine if you're filled with phlegm or if you're filled with fluid and suppose for example a heavy sinusitis how do you feel you don't feel very energetic you're dull you're listless you're inactive sometimes they can be you know excess of glandular uh, growth they can be inflammation there scrofulous scrofular diathesis so the person is passive but at the same time they are well balanced they are nice they are nice people they are not uh, evil or they are not scheming or they are not cunning it's just that they are very dull by nature and probably their development is also slow so the drugs that come to mind immediately are calcarea carb brita carb because these are the drugs that correspond to such a constitution so in this temperament you find that um okay can someone suggest the uh, myisms that correspond to this psychosis did someone say psychosis yeah psychosis and sora very good so sora plus psychosis so if you notice some of these temperaments are purely one myism and some of them are a combination of myisms see how well balanced out it is so sora plus psychosis because sora they they have only functional disturbances with the um, you know, excess of discharge but at the same time when the discharge gets too much and it doesn't get better if it's happening recurrently you find especially if there is glandular uh, enlargement uh, then you'll find that psychosis is also uh, involved so sora plus psychosis uh, do we have another name for that for this combination we just did this two lectures back if anybody remembers what myism is that come on it's very easy tubercular very good so tubercular myism that's what corresponds to this phlegmatic amongst others and uh, therefore i don't need to go into the ayurvedic and the carbo nitrogenoid or uh, hydrogenoid combination because tubercular itself stands out on its own it has its own identity and uh, it can correspond to this particular uh, temperament the last temperament is choleric now it's not the melancholic call say the same thing as that it this is different by itself this is to do with liver disorders so over a prolonged period of time if there is uh, abuse of substances or there is a destructive change in the body one of the organs that can get affected and that too in a reverse irreversible sort of way it is nothing but the liver so when there are liver disorders which gives rise to abnormal biliousness so herbert roberts calls it the bilious temperament uh today we are calling it the choleric temperament but they more or less are the same they mean the same thing so here the person imagine if you're having excessive bile in the body what happens you feel dizzy you feel uncomfortable there is a lot of uh, nausea there is a lot of discomfort there is a lot of heartburn digestive disorder which you cannot control which does not stop and one of the things that happens in excessive bilious biliousness is uh there is a lot of dizziness and there's a lot of uh, it it's almost like a madness because they feel the dizziness and they feel the discomfort in the head to such an extent that they'll feel they feel like they're going to go mad so it's uh, pitta pitta is the dosha in ayurveda that corresponds to this and um, therefore the person feels irritable they are aggressive they are destructive and they're also business like they're more bothered about only their work they don't really care about uh, other emotional aspects other uh, attachments in life this is they are only focused on their work people of that temperament so what myism does this correspond to easy one we are only left with one so you have to only answer that syphilis perfect so syphilis also the oxygenoid constitution because there is a lot of oxidation there is a lot of structural changes irreversible changes and it corresponds to the pitta dosha so if you see all these five temperaments three of them are purely a single myism two of two or three of them are the uh, no two of them are the uh, combination of uh, the myisms okay so this is how we try to classify and examples of drugs 
um, under the choleric temperament is Nux vomica, Lycopodium, Bryonia. Typical male remedies where they are business oriented, they only think about work, they're irritable, and they are, uh, they don't, they are impatient, you know. And these are all chronic drugs, chronic remedies. So that's how we relate. So if you have any questions, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. One more small point, an interesting thing to notice, melancholic and sanguine are uh, opposite of each other. If you notice the indications, if you notice the, uh, what you call the, the symptoms or the, what you call the, yeah, the characteristics that correspond, they're quite opposite of each other. Sanguine is hopeful, happy, uh, they are uh, exuberant, they're extroverted. Melancholic, they're kind of introverted and uh, they're very philosophical. They don't care for silly, frivolous things and enjoying life and all. They'd rather do their duty. So they're kind of opposite of each other. So any questions, any doubts? Uh, if you all can, please uh, write it in the, I mean, type it in the chat box. The question answer box is separate. So if you can do it in the chat box, we can all read it together. So any questions, any doubts? If you all can correlate uh, the different things, it's very easy for you to understand, easy for you to remember. Also, go to Herbert Roberts and please read the examples he has given. Uh, people belonging to a specific temperament uh, have a certain drug that suits them. Temperament and diathesis. Very good. So temperament is to do with the psychological uh, response or a psychological makeup of the patient. Diathesis is a tendency. So tendency to a certain part of the body getting affected. Tendency to a certain affection is diathesis. So somebody who is prone to catching cold somebody who is prone to skin affections, no matter what the stimulus is, somebody who is prone to uh, stomach upsets, or somebody who is prone to GIT complaints, somebody who is prone to neuromuscular disorders. So a tendency to a certain affection is diathesis. Good, I was expecting someone to ask that. I had asked my own professor this question when I was uh, in the first year of BHMS. Okay, you want to share, somebody is asked for the share, to share the slides of temperament once again. Do you want all the slides? Please let us know. Do you need all the slides? Because they will be available soon on our website. We're just putting them up. Yes, so uh, we will be sharing all the slides. Right now may not be possible as we have to wind up before seven or by seven. So if you have any questions, any queries, please do ask us. Don't get too confused between temperament, diathesis, constitution, myism. Uh, they're all related. In the end, it's the totality of symptoms and the cause of the disorder or the disease that uh, is relevant in choosing the similar one that helps us choose the remedy. So you need to do the totality. Okay, One symptom or just the constitution or uh, the te temperament is not enough to select the remedy. For example, Roberts has given a very good example. He said, Pulsatilla is best suited to fair and uh, pretty ladies, slim girls with fair hair and uh, light blue eyes. But tomorrow, if somebody comes to you who has eaten um, some rich food, a lot of birthday cake, and he can even be an old man of uh, a tall, uh, tall structure and constitution, he can easily be given pulsatilla and he will improve. So that doesn't mean that somebody who is not a pulsatilla constitution will not benefit from it. It's just that when they proved the remedy, it had maximum uh, symptoms coming out in those belonging to that particular constitution or that particular temperament. Hmm? So don't think that only one thing is enough for you to select the remedy. At the end, it is required for uh, us to do the entire totality, it required for us to take the cause, the cause behind it. Remember when I asked you to differentiate between the same complaints occurring in a soric or a syphilitic, the cause is important, the progress is important. Yes, what else? Okay, question is what is cachectic constitution? Cachectic means somebody has lost a lot of weight over a very short period of time and uh, has become very weak and frail. So the constitution uh, called cachetic is to do with that loss of weight over a very short period of time. It happens in debilitating diseases, diseases of long standing, diseases with a lot of uh, destruction at its base, uh, like cancers or like uh, diabetes, diabetes mellitus. 
So how important is it to consider temperaments while making a prescription? It is one of the things that you have to consider. It is not the only thing. If you get a patient who sits down in front of you, a pretty young girl and starts crying, uh, it's not necessary that she's only a pulsatilla. Take her case. You might suddenly find out that she could even be an Ignatia. She could even be a Sapia. She could even be, uh, she could very well even be a Nuxwamika, which is quite unusual, but it's not, uh, you know, impossible to have a young female who is a Nuxwamika patient. Okay, so temperament helps you. It helps you select the remedy, but it is not the sole reason that you select a remedy on. A totality of symptoms is more important. So Roberts has given excellent examples. Please read it. Uh, he's got a chapter called Temperaments. So if you can go through it, read it at night before you go to sleep, you can think about it and wake up feeling a lot more enlightened on it. I keep talking about Herbert Roberts. He's a great author. Helped me through college a lot. And his language is very good. So please do read the book and read the chapters on it. What else? So I believe those of you who are in, uh, what is the next topic? Good question. So yes, coming to that, uh, I believe we are not going to have classes for the next uh, couple of months, at least. At least by Sujata Monty, because she wants to prepare for her final year exams. Some questions. <laughs> what do you want me to ask? See, you have to read. I mean, it, it, these questions come only when you read and something strikes you. So I asked you what are the myosins that correspond to each temperament and how we had to correlate. Hmm? It's a very straightforward topic. It's very nice, very interesting. It's more fun to do it ourselves. So try to now go and read up some more drugs, some more constitutions and see what suits and what who suits which constitution, which drug. One of the ways to study Materia Medica and to understand constitution is if you have any uh, uh, character from a movie or from a book, or any, anything from any TV show or TV serial or Netflix, try to fit them into some constitution. The reason I'm asking you to do it with an imaginary character is because that is all you get. There is nothing more to them. For example, if I ask you to do of say Narendra Modi or Indira Gandhi, you don't know them personally. What they appear in uh, media, they might be so much more to them in person. So whereas a book or a character, that is all you get on those uh, 200 pages, whatever character um, the description you get that that is all it is try to see if they match any uh, drug and uh, try to connect it it's very interesting then you can uh, form your own constitution form your own picture and study the remedy i used to do that when i was in college so it's pretty useful it's very interesting also it's a lot of fun to do it okay so the next topic is uh, right now our speaker what would like to take leave for a few weeks to prepare for her exams I'd like to ask you all if you yourselves want a revision or want to have a general discussion before your exams. Are you all expecting to have exams anytime soon? Do any of you have exams coming up soon? Revision of aphorisms. Uh, aphorisms, again, see, it's divided into the various philosophy topics. So trying to do aphorisms is like doing the philosophy topics again. We've already covered myosins, case taking, uh, drug proving, potencies, posology. Ah, 16th October. Exams from 16th October. Oh my. <laughs> so if you all like, uh, Dr. Rashmika and I can do a revision next uh, Thursday. Just a general open discussion. We can try and uh, solve any topics or any queries in general. Uh, if, if it's all right. But don't bombard us with too many questions because we have to study and content. <laughs> Okay, so next Thursday, we can have an open session where uh, all of you can just put down queries, do join us. Our student speaker will not be presenting it. It's going to be Dr. Rashmika and me. Uh, organon, see again, uh, it's very difficult to explain like history of medicine, organon, uh, things that you know don't require explanation like the uh, editions of organon, all these things, unfortunately, you have to study it yourself. So if there is anything that you need revision on, uh, we can repeat it. Just, just single, single questions, okay? Not the entire topic. That's only so much we can do in one hour. So think about it and you can contact us. Let me just give you my email ID. Let us know what you think about it. Next Wednesday, we have a session by our other student speaker on the tissue salts. So do join us for that on next Wednesday. 
Materia Medica will continue. I don't know when Ankita might have to take a break to study for her exams. So, yeah, you're most welcome. Very happy to help you all. And uh, I have to be honest, I'm going to miss these sessions on Thursdays because uh, we developed quite a good bond with Sujata and started really enjoying all her uh, presentations. So till her exams are done, we will have to take a break from uh, Sujata Mohanty. And uh, we hope that she will return soon after her exams and uh, get back to presenting such good slides. Uh, you're done with your exams. You'll continue from Wednesday. Excellent. Very good. So Ankita will continue with Materia Medica uh, like usual. Next Wednesday will be issue sol solves in general. We won't be dealing with any of the polycrests or any of the remedies in detail uh, on it. Only in general. Yeah. One second. Did I not put my email ID properly? Hi, I did. Yeah. So let us know. Uh, you can write to us. And uh, link for Materia Medica sessions will be uploaded soon. I understand exams are around the corner. So we will double our efforts and make sure they're uploaded very soon. Rashmika, can you please just share the link for I Love Homeopathy once, please? Yeah, I've, all, uh, I've already shared it in the... Ha, just one more time, if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I'm just typing them. Ha, ha, ha. I have so best of, uh, yes. your email ID as well as my email Yes, ID. yes. Yeah, that is there. Yeah. So all of you, best of luck for your exams. If you want to stay with us, join us next week. We can have a small uh, question answer session over one hour. And uh, do well. And I hope these sessions have been of some use to all of you because it's a revision. It's a sort of, uh, uh, we're trying to go beyond exams. We're trying to make sure that you people have your uh, concepts, you know, perfect so that you use them in your practice after that. Yeah. Yes. All, for whoever chooses to practice homeopathy after this, <laughs> I hope I you are able to apply it here. Yeah, I hope so too. It's very interesting. It keeps you on your toes. So it, there's never a dull moment because you meet so many kinds of patients and uh, so many constitutions. And the challenge is to select the remedy based on whatever symptoms you're being presented with. So do think about it seriously if you want to practice homeopathy. There's a lot of response, good response from the public also. They, they do like homeopathy. And India is a good platform because people respect it a lot. Uh, we are called doctors here rather than just practitioners. Yeah. So all of you, all the best yeah. for all of you who are studying. Sujata, best of luck to you too. This yeah. goes to Dr. Shruti who is practicing homeopathy in Thank Ireland. You, so it's, yeah. you know, it's so nice to hear people who are practicing homeopathy even though they're not studying. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Correct. Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, how to read Materia Medica. So there is a class. But if you'd like, we can discuss it once next week or on Thursday if, uh, if there is nothing else that day after uh, seven. So we can even talk about uh, how do you study Materia Medica? Where do you study Materia Medica? What uh, authors you refer to? Please put away, throw away all your guides. Don't throw them, keep them aside. And uh, you know, use proper authors. Uh, don't get scared of the English. Please read it like you're reading a story. It's not difficult. Today, you all have smartphones. You all have Google. You can Google the meaning. We all didn't even have smartphones. We had those dial-up. Uh, I feel very old saying that to you. But uh, we made do with regular dictionaries and our professors. It was not so difficult. Okay. So most welcome for all the webinars. It was a pleasure having discussions with you all. I know those of you who have attended have done it uh, from your own interest. So it's good that you all have chosen to attend. And... Uh, how do we get, uh, Rinki Bansal, which year do you belong to? Which year of BHMS? How do we have 16 stars? Mm. Uh, good news. Uh, next week, um, Wednesday, we won't be able to talk much. We have only okay. one hour construction. Okay. But on Thursday, we have no webinars. Mm. Uh, Thursday webinar is being postponed to our Friday webinar. So Thursday okay. we are absolutely uh, free. To Very start. good. So Thursday we can even go on till 7.30 then. Yeah, uh, yeah. All of you can come with your questions. I can even uh, you know, discuss how to study Materia Medica on Thursday. Rinki Bansal, don't get so worked up. You're only in second year. You have two more years to go. Uh, I will, I will, I'll give you an outline on, on how to study Materia Medica, but it's not as difficult as it feels to you all. It's just that you have to understand your disease diagnosis like any other doctor, whether you're a BHMS or MBBS, the diagnosis is the same. Okay. And the clinical symptoms are what help you figure out the course of the disease. 
so if you can, if diagnosis is important so that you know what symptoms to expect so if some remedy randomly says a red sand in the urine don't think that it is you know just some imagination of the prover it is because there is a specific uh, clinical condition in behind it which is why the symptom is occurring once you understand that all the drugs are the same all the drugs are easy to understand yeah. as in they are all the same to uh, you know easy for you to understand not that they are all the same yeah yeah yeah, yeah. short review okay so all of you join us on next thursday then okay today it might be a little late because we have to wind up now but next thursday let's call it a general um, discussion on various homeopathic topics from an exam point of view and uh, whatever questions and doubts you'll have don't see i'll tell you for example don't ask me please explain seventh uh, observation of kent that is very very textbookish even i don't remember it i have no idea what the seventh observation is but something general like how do you study materia medica how do you understand a constitution how do you take uh, uh, drug proving how do you do case taking these things which are general questions general queries i will definitely tackle it come forward with all your questions uh, and do join us tell your friends also it's like a revision before your exams yeah patho now you're going to ask me even the uh, non homeopathic subjects what see it's not to yeah to anjali okay you know what i will i will answer all these things in general on thursday okay yeah. let me see what i can do i cannot give any specific description because it will take too much of time there are so many 30 40 of you but i'll at least guide you on how to study this so that you don't have to forget it in your life okay patho is difficult because you have to by heart a lot of things there is no scope for understanding which is why you have so many names to remember the funny part is i did badly in patho when i was in second year but i remember all those uh, microorganisms names today <laughs> if you ask me today i'll tell you so it's the pressure of examination yeah i have a very uh, you know bad story i had to go to attend uh, uh, you should be knowing beacon uh, has this uh, debate competitions on homeopathy every year so mm-hmm. there was one competition there was a debate competition exactly a day before my patho exam oh. so i was in mumbai giving the debate competition came oh. early in the morning to go and i think give my patho exam which i didn't study at all yes yes so yes the patho has uh, been taken very lightly in second year <laughs> yeah yeah no it's not actually if you understand the the basic uh, principle behind pathology see the the course of inflammation okay once you understand that inflammation is all about these steps you can apply that to any disease okay it doesn't matter whether it is cirrhosis or whether it is hepatitis or whether it is meningitis the course is the same at the same time understand what a bacteria does understand what a virus does and then you can predict the course of the disease it's very simple see conjunctivitis can be uh, inflammatory conjunctivitis can be allergic conjunctivitis can be bacterial can be viral okay if you look at the symptoms itself you can tell whether it's bacterial or viral or it is allergic by nature okay and based on that you can select your remedy now there is no confusion at all if once you understand the the foundation and the course of inflammation inflammation is the foundation is the base of pathology and inflammation can arise from allergy it can arise from infection it can arise from autoimmune disease so once you find out the cause behind that your pathology is it's done okay it's not at all that difficult i also did very badly in patho when i was and that too i was uh, i i got i think third or fourth rank in B, first bhms i came all you know very proud and very confident i thought i'll you know i'll conquer the whole world and the next thing i know patho i scored 50% just scraped through and i was shocked i went to the hod and complained asked him to raise my marks he said look this is not to do with marks at all if you done badly just accept it and get on with it so then i sat sat and studied it then i understood that it is uh, very interesting mcqs mcq is not difficult it's still better than writing 20 pages no for a 10 mark answer how do you prefer for mcqs what are your preferred mcqs don't look at it as preparing for mcq or for essays and all that study it in the same way once you know your matter subject matter you can appear it in any format okay exams are not the end of the world everybody passes their exams it's the examination that you do of your patient later that is more important uh, read it no, no. Ah. reading every single line or every single thing is not important Hmm. today if you understanding the concept is very important like dr dikta has mentioned yeah. if you know the uh, five stages of inflammation you can huh. apply the concept to every uh, like conjunctivitis or meningitis or exactly 
the, the, it's just the concept of the base you need to remember first mm. and then if there is anything altered in the pathology that you have to specifically remember that is all yes. which is going to cover you right absolutely right Apart so that mcqs will have options so you will be able to you know mm. choose among the options also help, help us with secretary and all <laughs> definitely you people are getting scared of exams i'm more worried about practice later because that's when your real test and real exam starts so don't worry about what you write in the paper there are people who come from very very um, you know limited background as far as english is concerned they have studied they have passed exams even topped the exams so don't get scared of exams study in such a way that you remember it for life and can apply it in your practice and um, there's something that one of my college professors had said he said don't study hard he study smart, smart. so right. don't spend 12 hours sitting and mugging up all your pathogens and all the things just learn the basics of inflammation and uh, apply it afterwards i'll give you a small somebody asked for some uh, example it's not a case example but my own example i'll give you i'm not showing off i'm just sharing the experience there is no showing off here please so we had our uh, obstetrics and gynec viva in the third year and uh, with me sat another boy we both were giving our answers together and the examiner was a very nice lady she was a young lady but she was an md in homeopathy so that itself made us feel a little uncomfortable we were a little scared of her and uh, she was purposely asking odd symptoms of odd drugs like she was not asking please describe the menstrual disorder of millifolium or uh, colophyllum she was asking something like tell describe the cancer the cervical cancer of actia spicata so till yesterday actia spicata was only a, a muscular like the small joints in muscular remedy so i was thinking to myself oh what can it be so something else she asked like uh, describe the uh, what you call the leucorrhea of uh, kali no she said describe the dysmenorrhea of uh, kali fos so you have to just uh, if you don't know the exact particulars just think kali fos has general symptoms pain in small spots pain with a lot of tiredness so dysmenorrhea is the same for everybody it does not change with the drug it does not change with the patient it is dysmenorrhea is with the, of the uterus you cannot have dysmenorrhea of the eye right so you have to give the same uh, general symptoms for all of them there will be excessive bleeding there will be pain during uh, menstruation there will be uh, abnormal discharge there will be sometimes even uh, reddish bluish dark colored blood clots or there will be heavy flow all these things are almost the same in all the drugs if you notice but what are the things that set it apart how like i've always said there is one drug for many complaints and many drugs for one complaint so for this one complaint there are many drugs how do you tell them apart it is the uh, it it is the general symptoms and the particular symptoms that helps tell you apart so if you say that uh, kali for the pain is in one spot the patient can pinpoint so that is typical of kali group of uh, remedies so i got away with those answers she was actually impressed you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that's very yeah. true exactly then she said something about uh, she you have to be smart you have to be smart so like for example creosote i had no idea what the cervical uh, cancer uh, symptoms were of creosote which was specific to creosote i said okay cervical cancer it must be abnormal bleeding a lot of uh, pain there will be a lot of induration so i thought and i said discharges are worse uh, on uh, lying down and uh, it doesn't happen when it's standing she said very good excellent and she gave me top marks so i was not uh, again i'm not showing off and i'm not saying see i'm so great what i'm saying is just think on your feet just be quick on your feet okay that is how you tell the drugs apart so because uh, cervical cancer is the same in creosote or carbolic acid or uh, whatever lachesis or whatever it, it, the symptoms the, the main symptoms of that uh, uh, disorder disease will be the same all of them will have induration all of them will have uh, abnormal uh, bleeding but what sets them apart it is the general symptoms the modalities the constitution the the what you call the phase of life that they are in so it's things like that that helps you choose the remedy try to study in the same way that's why i keep comparing drugs when i am teaching the drugs because you have to be parallel you have to think when you think of rustox you have to think of bryonia you have to think of apis only then you'll be able to tell them apart in the clinic viva is all about smartness it's not life doesn't stop with viva no after viva you have a life no a career entire career so you have to prepare for that also otherwise you'll be lost you'll not uh, the patient comes to you they you will not have the time to sit and open your repertory and bore you can say bhaiya ruko ek minute and you know go through the symptoms that time so you should be a little smart that time 
and it comes with practice please nobody is expecting you all to become perfect homeopaths uh, the day you all graduate even patients are considerate they know that you're a a young inexperienced doctor so they do give you a lot of time that's why it's called practice because you have to keep on practicing nobody is perfect you learn as you grow that is as you go you learn i had last month i had uh, la- last month or month before i think in july i had four patients four consecutive patients of lycopodium i myself thought what am i doing only prescribing lycopodium to four different all four of them were females uh-huh. all four of them belonged to four four different ages age groups one was a 78 year old lady one was a 70 78 year old housewife one was a 73 year old uh, principal school principal very sophisticated and very smart she was still working one was an 18 year old uh, teenage girl and the third the fourth was a 42 year old uh, uh, chef chef hasn't she is she is like a cook um, i mean a, a proper lady living in a residence and everything so four different people four different constitutions all of them were benefited from like a podium and none of them were males none of them were in the intellectual okay maybe the principal was but then none of them were in the so called intellectual background that we expect like a podium to be none of them were lawyers so you see how it uh, gets connected so temperament is not the only thing it's the entire constitution entire background entire cause entire totality of symptoms and that's how it is so let us get together on thursday uh sujatha once again thank you very much for all these sessions you've been very very prompt uh, you've worked very hard and uh, i can see that you've improved with every session when your slides in your presentation in your quick thinking so best of luck to you and uh, you, stay in touch with us uh, any time for whatever and uh, we'd yeah. like to hear from you again after your exams are over we can have some more sessions with you then yeah Yeah, can we I'm can we sure. can we see your face your yeah, i can only see your name actually yeah yeah i think we need to stop yeah ma'am yeah very nice Hi, yeah Hi. Hi so she's very active on instagram so all of you can follow her and uh, again thank you very much everybody for attending and being uh, uh, regular attendees there are a lot of names that are very familiar to me so i'm very happy to see all those names each time or uh, we are not going anywhere we are there very much with you we'll have sessions so stay in touch with us and uh, sujatha is taking leave for a few weeks so we'll see her again soon uh, is it final year your final exams or final year sujatha are yeah, you I'm appearing fine. for your final so after that we'll have to call her yeah, dr sujatha fine. okay not just call her ms sujatha we have to call her dr sujatha after that yes. so she'll be one of us then so all of you thank you so much for attending and stay in touch next thursday we will uh, clear a lot of your doubts uh, don't go too specific in your doubts even i'm very bad at remembering so uh, more of how to study how to remember how to recall things like that yeah very yeah good. thank you so rinki you can very also send us uh, you know send type us uh, write us to absolutely uh, absolutely any topics or yes. having any difficulties you can write us yes yes us so can, uh, yes you can even email us some of your questions or some of the topics I won't be able to do every topic completely. Maybe small aspects of one topic which you find specifically difficult, then we can uh, touch those. Then, okay. Yeah. So with this, we will close the session. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, this has been a very memorable part of the lockdown, and uh, we're all very grateful for having come up with this concept of having these student-led sessions. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. See you next Thursday. See you next Wednesday for uh, tissue salts, and see you next Thursday for general uh, queries and question answers. If there's All right. There's a doctor in the chat who's uh, wanting to join the next uh, webinar. Today yes. Seven thirty. We'll be having. We'll be talking about non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Hmm. So if anyone's interested, you can join us there. Okay. Very nice. For some reason. gluten allergies have become uh, a lot more prevalent today than they were 25 years back yeah exactly it's very strange start with that yeah i feel it's a very western concept because in india we don't have too many gluten allergies that's why yeah, so many people have turned to vegan to yes we get gluten free yeah so we're going to cross up all whys and what's of all that correct 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 all right thank you so much everybody so let me close this session yes. and see you all next week bye thank good night you, thank you good night, thank you. Good night.